So we usually put the new guy in the closet, but Matt was really confident that he could like get this mud on, he could get it smooth. So I kind of threw him a freebie and I put him where the kitchen cabinets are gonna be. So at least if it's really bad, it's kind of fixable. Um, we'll kind of see how he's doing. I don't, I think he's thinking it's gonna be a lot easier than it is, but some people pick it up and they're just a natural at it. So uh, we'll check on that here in a minute. And we are talking trades and talking drywall. Let's go. Build original series hosted by Matt Reisinger. Talking Trades, brought to you by Front Door and Sashco. All right, Lydia. Not the smoothest job, but how'd I do here? Uh, you set yourself up for a lot of sanding. Yeesh. Yeah, so I hope you like sanding. <laughs> <laughs> and you may be made. But this living room wall is gonna look awesome, right? The kitchen cabinet wall is gonna look awesome. Oh, the cabinets are going here. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. that's better. I guess we're okay. That's good, we're okay. okay. That's better, I was a little worried. It wasn't awful, especially, I mean, this is like your first time doing this, It is, right? yes. Okay, so you actually did great. Since I, mean, I did it in high school anyways. Oh, the mug got on the wall where it's- Okay, so there. when I see you and the other pros in the field, I see you load your knife up and then you kind of taper it. Am mm -hmm. I doing that right? Yep, Is exactly. that the correct move? Yeah, you can or you can't. What it does is it just helps with like drips and kind of helps with your edge. Okay. Yeah. And then I also feel like I'm putting more pressure on the outside of the knife when I scrape the top outside of the knife when I scrape the bottom and then a more flat coming across. Is that true or not? Yeah, that's true. Like when I do this, I would cut this even farther. Um, and then your your mud isn't quite, you wanna have your mud centered here, not uh, so low. Yeah, why am I so low? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanna be covering the flat. Um, then you, you can take it out that far if you want, but. But it only took me 30 minutes to get this wall done. That's not bad, right? I think you are going to like lose money because you're gonna have to come back and sand this so much. You just cost yourself probably like 20 bucks. <laughs> okay, so how about you show me how I should be doing it on this seam over here? Absolutely. All right, let's, let's go take it. a look. So Matt uh, hit the porta potty and I don't wanna have to deal with this later, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix this. It should not take me very long, but I don't wanna have to deal with this later and sand it all. You know, I've watched enough of Lydia's videos that I really felt like I had that. I mean, that was my first time, uh, you know, coating a whole wall, putting that top coat on, and I think I nailed it. I think Lydia was really impressed. All right, Lydia, show me how you would do it now that I showed you my stuff. Okay, well, first things first, um, our knife's a little dirty, but that's okay. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and load my knife up. Uh -huh. And you want a pretty decent amount of mud. And then I'm just gonna use even pressure and I'm gonna spread it all across this flat. Huh, so you didn't taper like I did. That's interesting. No, because I'm gonna taper after. Got it. And then I'm gonna take my knife. I'm telling you, already, I'm seeing already that you're very smooth on that. I'm gonna cut my, oh, there's a, there's a messed up screw there. Yep, proud screw. And then I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna run it nice and flat down. And then I'll even clean it up some more. So as you can tell, it's a little <laughs> overfilled, honestly. Oh my gosh, just you're so much faster than what I just did. Okay. Wow. And then for the screws, we're gonna take our knife and instead of doing like single. Oh, you did all three of those all in swipe. one swipe. Yep, and then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna bring it down. I'm also noticing that you're only trying to fill the nail head. Yes. Rather than mine that had kind of a patch of drywall. Yeah, that's really important because really all you wanna be doing is filling the nail head. Got that's it. all we wanna be doing. Because you would see mine, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Or you have a lot of sanding. You have to do. sand it, and then when you're sanding screws, you kind of you run the risk of roughing up all this paper face. Got it. Finish this little section. I okay. want to see you. Yeah, let's I want to see it. how quick you are without having to talk to me. Go 
Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. That's definitely the difference between the newbie and the seasoned vet right there. Yeah, and I can even tell right now too, there's a little bit of a shoulder going on here. So there's a secondary high point in the board. So you see how it's kind of light right there. Okay, yeah. Yep, so sometimes that you have to come back and like kind of split that out too, but it's how, a good first coat. And how long did it take you to get to this place where, I mean, had we not been talking, you would have done this seam in what, less than a minute, right? Yeah, yep, probably, yeah, yep. And is that something that took you 10 years to be able to get to that point or hmm. six months to two years? I would say the dangerous thing about drywall is you can think you're good because mm -hmm. you're fat, you're better than, you know, what you started with. Yep. But to get like really, really good, you can get there in about, you know, five to seven years. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of the dangerous spot because then you really think you're really good and you don't and you quit learning. All right. Like you kind of are like, I know everything and I'm ready to go off on my own, start sure. my own company and do my own stuff. And like, honestly, I've been in this trade for 20 years and I still learn stuff every day. Which is one of the fun things I love about all kinds of construction is there's always something new in learning. Always, always, yep. Yep. especially in this trade. So if you're a high schooler watching this, how do you think you could, uh, you know, learn this trade and how would you know? Because I, I assume that there are some folks that take it up really naturally and others that maybe struggle and maybe this isn't the best trade for them. Absolutely. So it is really true. Once you like some people just pick this up and they are everything fits. They have a knack everything for it. clicks. They have an easy time spreading the mud. Mm -hmm. They like it. They like being dirty. Um, they just kind of enjoy the whole process. Mm -hmm. There's other people that you give this to and they're like don't know what to do and they're just awkward <laughs> and it's uncomfortable for them and they hate it. Yeah. So it is really kind of one of those trades you know pretty quickly. So, you know, working a summer job with a crew is a yeah. great way to go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just kind of get your hand into it and see, hey, I really, really love this or mm, this was definitely not for me. And yeah. you'll know. And I think that even, a, you know, an older person, a vet coming out of a couple of years of uh, military service. Yeah. Uh, if you got a job at the drywall crew, you'd probably know in a couple of months, like, I really like this. I could definitely do this as a career or, definitely. you know, I'm really not that good at this. I need yeah. to try something else. I'd say most people quit within three months. They start, you start training them. Um, they either just don't like it, like mm. it's too hard or they're they don't like being messy or you kind of have to go through the grunt work when you first start. Sure. Like, we're not going to throw you on the good stuff. You're going to be doing screws, sweeping, um, mixing scraping, mud, mixing, maybe. helping the rest of the crew be productive. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Moving material around. Yeah. And, it, and that's just part prepping. of construction. Yeah. yeah. You kind of have to like earn your stripes. That's right. So, Nothing wrong with that. That's normal. Yeah, you know, definitely. So within the first three months, you kind of learn and if, if you like it or not. I can see that. Yeah. Okay, so top coat. Yes. We still have all our corner beads to go, right? We do. You want to try some corner beads? Let's give it corner beads a try. All right. Well, I'll give you some pointers this time. All right, let's go upstairs. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so Lydia, we got a butt joint here, right? <laughs> that is a butt joint. You got a little taller all of a sudden, didn't Just you? Just a little bit. What do you got on there, my friend? These are stilts. How about that? That's yes, awesome. Yes, they're very cool. They're adjustable, different heights. You strap them onto your legs and your feet, and then you can walk around. And you can walk and, and do all these ceilings as sure normal can. with those? I mean, let's, let's see here. Let's do some How about some that? Screws. You've spent some time on those, haven't you? Oh, yes. Tons and tons and tons of time. And they're pretty stable and you don't feel like you're going to fall? Very. So I've probably fallen in my 20 years maybe three times. That's it? That's it. Yeah, so pretty stable. Yeah, so one time I went down and was able to hug a propane tank. One time I didn't strap my foot in and just went like... 
<laughs> so always make sure your feet are strapped. Yeah, good call. And then another time, um, I tripped on a pipe that was sticking out of the wall. Oh so gosh. always make sure you're being careful. Yeah. But no major injuries. But how tall can you go with those things? So these are two foot right now, and you can get up to three and a half feet tall with these. Maybe actually a bit more, probably about four feet. I mean, I'm six foot tall, and I got to tell you, without these little two foot sawhorses, I don't think I could do these ceilings without them. So yeah. it makes a lot of sense that you'd put stilts on. Oh, absolutely. They're with me every day. And I typically, a typical day, I'm on them probably for anywhere between three to five hours, maybe more. Wow. That's Sometimes a lot. it's all day. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. How about we get these ceilings done? Because yes. I know we're behind on time. We're going to make some money. Absolutely. You ready to get this butt joint? Let's go. Let's so go. I saw you checking it already with your knife. So what did you notice? So this butt joint looks to me like it's already coming down a little bit. Yeah. So we have to be cautious about not overfilling this probably, right? Yep, exactly. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take it and from where that high point is, you're going to want to build up on that side and build up on that side. Okay. And try and get rid of that high, high joint there. Got so it. I want you to do one full 10 on that side and then one full 10 on that side. Okay, so one full 10 here. Yep. I need more. I need more material on my knife, don't I? Yeah, and butt joints eat a lot of mud. Wow, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. I'm gonna have to fill my my trowel here a little bit more next time, aren't I? Yes. There's a glove on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a little bit of mud on me doing this. Just things. a little bit. I have a feeling. Oh my gosh, I am not good at this, Lydia. And, and it's hard. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. This is day one for me, though. I'll get better. Give me some time, boss. Oh my gosh, it's we'll, like we'll see it's like raining mud on me. I got I got to refill my. my well, pan already. I'll, I'll show you a little trick to what we can do here first. Okay, talk to so, me. So go ahead and cut this edge right here. Okay. There you go. Oh yeah, I just got a yeah, ton of mud you back. Just get a ton of mud. And because we're going to do one side at a time, go ahead and take your knife and, and let's see, where's the middle of your tape? Oh, right there. It's like right here? So yeah, do so I no, want to... actually, no, we don't want to run down the middle. We want to run on this side. Ah, okay. So yeah, like this? Yeah, not so sharp. Come more like that. Right here? Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, I got a ton of material back now. Yep. Which I'm going to need to fill on this side, right? Yeah, exactly. Is it harder to fill your... Uh, uh, there you your go. Knife and when it's you've easier got... to run the knife that way too. Yeah, Sometimes, that makes sense. Some people go the other way, but the, I feel like that way is a lot easier to go forwards. Is it harder to refill when you've got your stilts on? Um, no, typically I just make sure I have a bucket up before I fill. So I would put my bucket on top of a trigger or a box to make sure I can Okay, it. so you're going to put your bucket here in other mm -hmm. words. There you go. It's awkward, I'm not gonna lie. It is awkward, I'm especially the first couple times you do it. It's very awkward. Yeah, ceilings are not easy. No, they're not. They're really hard on your neck. This is where I go, you know, I'm gonna hire a pro because this would probably <laughs> take me all day plus to do this kitchen ceiling, living room ceiling here. Yeah, and that's really, you know, that's where being professional comes in because there's always gonna be people that try to attempt to do this also. And that's sometimes a big part of the work too, is you're, you're there fixing other people's work. Wow, that was really not very good. No, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> is it extra hard because it's a butt and I'd be better on the seam, do you think? Yeah, butt's definitely a little hard, but a part of it too is, is just kind of the angle of your knife and yeah. just getting that angle right. All right, I want to see you on stilts do this. Okay. I'm going to move these saw horses. I want to see what you do. That was loud. And I forgot to tell you too, sometimes there's two sides to a knife. There'll be a convex and a concave side. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. Is that true in that knife? And I'm, I was This one's to... actually pretty straight. So I heard, I saw you eye the knife earlier. Yeah. That's what you're doing. I wondered what you were doing. Yeah, trying to figure out which side is which. Oh my gosh, that sure. looks a million Hold times on. better already. You're so much smoother at putting that mud on. It's all about pressure. Yeah. Now you get some schmutz in your mud there, I it looks have like. I some schmutz in my mud. We call that trash. That's probably my fault because I loaded that up for you. I bet yeah. I got trash in there. You just pick it up. Boy, those stilts are nice. They are so nice. I cannot do my job without them. Oh, that looks a million times better. 
And you know, if we had skimming blades, we don't have any here with us today, but they help. A ton. A ton. Yeah, I can imagine. I'll tell you what, I'm not very great at ceilings and I don't want to cause extra work for you and Ryan. Why don't I let you work on the ceilings? And I feel pretty good about the corner beads. Why don't I do the corner beads on these two windows while you work on these ceilings? Uh, sounds like a plan to me. All right, let me get what I need. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, sounds good. Lydia, I suspect I may have slowed you down a little bit today. You know what? Just having you here was a huge help. I knew you weren't <laughs> going to be perfect at it, but you were definitely much better than I thought. And I you're am. willing to learn. I got a little better at the end of the day. Yeah, you did. You After a, a few better. corner beads, I got the hang of it. Yes, you did. I must go ahead and take these stilts off. You know, you know yeah, speaking of stilts, when I was doing ceilings, Lydia, I got a little bit of mud on me on the old <laughs> droppage. <laughs> Just, just a touch there, huh? I'm assuming that's a newbie mistake right there. Because um, you're not nearly as dirty as I am. Yeah, you learn. You learn to kind of like duck and weave. This you is gotta, not. Gotta, gotta be, uh, what is it? Sting like a. <laughs> butterfly. What? Yeah, no, float like Fla a butterfly, sting, sting like, like a, a bee. bee. There we go. You gotta float like a butterfly. Yeah, this definitely reminds me of the uh, the old adage dirty hands, clean money. Oh, absolutely. I, wear, I actually wear gloves. Do you really? Yeah, on a typical day. Yeah. I saw Ryan wearing gloves earlier today, too. Yeah, it saved your hands big time. You uh, you shouldn't get into this trade, though, if you don't like being dirty, because you're definitely going to get dirty, no matter no. what. Yeah. Now, obviously, I got way dirtier than you did, and I'm wearing black. But on the other hand, this is definitely uh, a trade where you're going to get sweaty yes. and dirty, and you're going to feel good at the end of the day, and you're going to get a workout, and we burned some calories today. Yeah, I think that's really a great point. This is not a job if you like staying super clean all the time, Yeah, because it's it's actually pretty dirty. You're going to get stuff all over you, and you're going to sweat a lot, too. Yeah, so. for sure. I'm going to go back to the hotel and get a shower. Why don't you and yeah. Ryan get cleaned up? We'll meet out to dinner, and then tomorrow, we'll take these guys back to your studio. We'll be a little cleaner, and we'll spend a little bit of time digging into who is Olivia and how'd you get here. I hope you clean up before dinner. I definitely I'll, will I don't clean know up. if the lettuce in. I'm not sure the lettuce in like those. <laughs> it could be the new fashion craze. <laughs> we're talking trades, we're talking drywall. Next up, I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and show you what they've been doing to encourage young people to join us in the trades. I want to thank our friends at Front Door for sponsoring this Talking Trade series. If you're not familiar with Front Door, they are reimagining how homeowners maintain and repair their most valuable asset, their home. As the parent company of two leading brands, Front Door brings over 50 years of experience in providing their members with comprehensive options to protect their homes from costly and unexpected breakdowns through their extensive network of pre-qualified professional contractors. American Home Shield has approximately 2 million members and gives homeowners budget protection and convenience, covering up to 23 essential home systems and appliances. Now, Front Door is a cutting-edge, one-stop app for home repair and maintenance. Enabled by their stream technology, the app empowers homeowners by connecting them in real time through video chat with pre-qualified experts to diagnose and solve their problems. The Front Door app also offers homeowners a range of other benefits, including DIY tips, discounts, and much more. More information about American Home Shield and Front Door, visit frontdoorhome.com. Now, as the largest provider of home service plans in the nation and a network of approximately 16,000 independent contractors, Front Door is spreading the word and advocating to bring new talent into the pipeline by creating opportunities for young people as plumbers, electricians, and other highly skilled professions. Front Door has also been sponsoring organizations committed to the advancement of the skilled trades like Skills USA and Be Pro Be Proud. I've been to their events. Those are amazing organizations and huge thanks to Front Door 
for their partnership in this Talking Trade series. I want to say a huge thanks to my friends at Sashco for sponsoring this Talking Trade series. First off, if you're not familiar with them, Sashco makes a huge line of premium cocks and sealants that I use every day on my high performance builds. They're a family owned company that makes their products in Colorado, but they also have been a massive supporter of trade school education. Now, if you are a trade school teacher watching this video, I wanna tell you about their class pack program, which was designed for you to use in your classroom to educate students about sealant technology and application. Now I've been through a version of this program and it was really fun and educational. You can enhance your curriculum with their expert resources. Learn more at sashco.com backslash trades dash support. Now, if you aren't a teacher, you can still make a difference in this battle to bolster our trade base. Take the Sashco challenge, volunteer a local trade school in your town, capture the moment, share it on social media and tag Sashco, and your reward will be a free case of Lexel as a token of their appreciation for supporting trade education. Thanks again, Sashco, for sponsoring these videos.